Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the carnivore diet. We're going to talk about the pros and cons. We're going to talk about my little experiment with it. And we're also going to talk about who should do the carnivore diet. Who is this good for and how to use the carnivore diet. If you had asked me 10 years ago, what do I think about this kind of diet? I would have never tried it. I wouldn't have touched it with a 10 foot pole. But around eight years ago, I started developing symptoms of autoimmune issues, and that completely transformed my path. I've been a nutritionist for 20 years, and when my autoimmune issues kicked up, I started studying nutritional therapy, and I started getting into the AIP diet, and the AIP diet transformed my life. It made my skin better. It made my body composition better. I never have to count calories. I never have to... Um, fight with my body. I'm always at a healthy body weight. Also, it gave me a copious amount of energy. I am so keyed up. I have so much energy that I'm usually the most energized person in any room. I'm the most energized person I know. I feel amazing. So all that's to say, if you'd asked me also 10 years ago, hey, do you think tomatoes are bad to eat? I would have said no, like nothing wrong with tomatoes. Tomatoes are a health food. However, I just, I've, I've learned over the past eight years as I'm specializing in nutritional therapy, that there are certain things that there are certain things that we need to keep our minds open to. So when I hear a novel nutritional therapy kind of protocols like the carnivore diet now, I'm more open to it because I, I see that certain things, eliminating certain things from my diet and from my lifestyle has been a huge benefit to me. So I came upon the carnivore diet over the past couple years. It's kind of been in the zeitgeist. The main selling points for carnivore in the mainstream and how it's gotten into the mainstream is basically the autoimmune stuff and the weight loss stuff. So I don't really so much care about the weight loss stuff. However, I always feel amazing. I've I've been at like on a scale of one to 10, I'm always right around an eight point something or a nine for how great I feel. And anyway, I'm always looking to, okay, let's see if I can dial that up a little bit. So I decided to try the carnivore diet for four weeks and I'm going to give you my, my take on it. Here's what happened first week. Week number one, I felt about the same, which means I felt great. I felt fine. I felt good. I didn't feel any better or worse than I do when following the AIP diet. What I noticed though for side effects was the, the typical side effects that you hear about for digestive distress. There was a little bit of digestive adjustments. I won't get into the details. You can look up some other, some other videos for that, but yeah, there's, we'll just say there's an excess of situations happening throughout the day. And that was kind of not great, but everything else totally fine, easy breezy. Another thing I noticed on the first week was a complete um, peace at mealtimes because you know what you're going to eat. I really enjoy the simplicity of it. I really enjoy the straightforwardness of it. I also enjoyed the grocery shopping because it was very simple. What am I going to get? I'm getting meat. Not bad. So that part of it, I loved. The second week I noticed still the same thing. I felt great. I felt just as good as when I'm following the AIP diet, which means I felt great. However, I also noticed an added benefit of my vision um, was slightly improved. I did notice a slight improvement in my vision by maybe, I don't know, 15, 20%. And this usually also happens when I'm fasting. So this is most likely the ketosis happening. Um, the ketones do some good things to my body for a short period of time. And then it's a diminishing return, which I'll get into in a minute here. Um, but I did notice an, an increase in visual clarity. Things just look a little bit sharper. I also noticed a slight increase in mental clarity. My mind is always very sharp and clear, but I noticed it was dialed up by maybe like five to 10%, a little more mental clarity. Uh, same thing with the digestive issues. I still continuing with some digestive issues. Also, my workouts were fine, were good. However, they weren't as robust. And that's, again, that's a ketosis talking. Um, but overall, I'd say week two was a, was a pretty unremarkable, good kind of week, like my normal weeks are. And then we get into week three. Now week three, things start to get a little bit choppy. 
I wasn't experiencing, I did not experience a ketosis U-turn because I go in and out of ketosis on a regular basis. So this had nothing to do with ketosis. Um, by week three, I noticed, week two, by the way, I forgot to say this, week two, my skin was getting a little bit dull. It was duller by maybe like 15%. And I was like, is this just in my head? I can't really tell, I don't really know. But however, by the third week, yeah, my skin was getting kind of dull. And again, this is like a superficial thing. I am throwing this out there because it's something, you know? So my skin got a little bit duller, but I also noticed some other things. I also noticed that I was experiencing a little bit of a, of a heart palpitation. My heart rate, was my, my resting heart rate was a little bit higher. My blood pressure was higher. And I know this because when I was doing inversions, my yoga inversions, I noticed a pressure in my head. It was very uncomfortable. I could just tell my blood pressure was getting higher. I never ever have any issues with my blood pressure, but it was getting a little bit higher. I also noticed some, some sleep issues. So my sleep was getting kind of erratic. I was waking up throughout the night every couple hours, just more than usual. Those are some of the cons I noticed. And I just started to notice, I just didn't, I felt okay, I didn't feel bad, but I just didn't feel as good as I normally do. Carried into week four, and this trend started to kind of continue, and I started to just feel not great, like not as great. I like feeling great. I felt okay, I felt fine. I just didn't feel great. So. That's kind of where I was at. And then midweek four, I decided, okay, I'm calling it. This is enough, inf it was enough information to me, for me to know that my body was just giving me the cues and my, in my inherent connection with my body is so strong that I could just tell, and eh, my body's not really liking this anymore. Um, so that's where I, I ended it the third day of week four. And, and actually, felt really good to end it. Not because I didn't enjoy the carnivore diet. It just felt really good to get back on eating some vegetables. So that was my experience, but now I'm going to talk about everything that goes on in the background and the, what, what exactly is happening. And also my thoughts on using the carnivore diet for fat loss and for autoimmune issues. So first things first, the digestive issues and all that stuff. What's happening when we do the carnivore diet is we're killing off the bacteria in our gut. We're changing the flora in our gut and some of the bugs in our gut die off and this creates, we need an adjustment period. Another thing that's happening is we're eating a lot more fat than we usually do without a lot of fiber and carbohydrate. So that, that impacts our digestive enzymes. Our enzymes aren't quite up to speed yet. So if you keep doing the carnivore diet, I'm sure that that adjustment period will iron itself out. This could be a benefit. So if you're experiencing SIBO, if you've got any kind of digestive issues, if you have IBS, especially IBS C, or any kind of digestive issues, the carnivore diet can be great for you. The carnivore diet can be a, a huge benefit. Another thing that's happening is ketosis. So we're getting into ketosis when we're doing the carnivore diet. Our carbs are real low, the fats are pretty high, the protein's pretty moderate. That's, you know, that's just the name of the game. You're, you're in ketosis. So if, if you're a female and you're watching this, ketosis is a great state to be in. However, I, as a nutritionist, and my background again is now nutritional therapy, I really don't love ketosis as a 24 seven, 365 state for women to be in. Ketosis is kind of puts us in a state of emergency. And this can uh, impact our hormones. And this sends our bodies a signal that there's a, there's a mode of starvation happening. Now, this isn't always the case. This isn't always the case. But for, fem for the female body, a really, good, a really good approach to take with the female body is take it nice and gentle with all of your dietary changes. We never really want to go too far into putting the pedal to the metal, nothing too extreme. We don't want to do a bunch of long, prolonged fasts. We don't need to do lots and lots of ketosis. We just need to keep everything just maybe foot lightly on the gas and then take it off. Lightly on the gas, take it off. What I mean by that is get into ketosis sometimes and then get out of ketosis. Do refeeding periods, eat some carbohydrates sometimes, stop eating carbohydrates sometimes, but we never want to go into a state of deprivation 
So the female body hates deprivation. And when we get into extreme ways of eating, like the carnivore diet, some females, not all, but some, the female body can really kick back in a big way. It can, it can lower our thyroid hormones. It can reduce all of our sex hormones. There's just lots of things going on in the background when we put our bodies in a state of stress. And ketosis for long periods of time can be very stressful to the female system. Anything extreme is stressful to the female system. So if you're a female and you're thinking about going on a carnivore diet, I wouldn't say you shouldn't do it. I'm just gonna tell you maybe it's not a great strategy for just doing it long term. There are, I know there are YouTubers out here that are on it for long term um, and it works for some people and if you're one of those people, congratulations, so happy for you. I, I'm not one of those people and I think a lot of women would do best to just keep things more in balance, keep things more in the center point. When we're thinking about just everything in life. If, if nutrition is a pendulum, and it is a pendulum, everything is an energetic pendulum, what we're aiming for is a center point. What we're aiming for is to attain a set of daily practices and ways of eating and ways of being that give our bodies a state of harmony in body, mind, and spirit. And if we take that pendulum and we hold it over to an extreme point of, of tension in the carnivore diet is like one of those things we're just holding this tension here holding it holding it holding it then when it finally when we drop it because it's not sustainable we can't hold it up here forever you know i mean some people can there's a rare bell curve person you know if you're on the end of the bell curve maybe you can but if you can't which most people can't and you let it go that pendulum comes crashing all the way to the other side and the other side is going back to our old habits. So this is what we call crash dieting. It's like this pendulum crashing back and forth. And that is, as a nutritionist, I just, I really cringe at that because that's painful for the, for the psyche. It's painful for our bodies, minds, and spirits. It's not healthy to do that. So we want to stay in the center. And that's why I'm a fan of the AIP way of eating. Autoimmune protocol or the anti-inflammatory protocol or the AIP, it's nice and centered. It's like balanced. There's carbohydrates in there. There's healthy fats. There's proteins. There's lots of vegetables. There's fruits. You're getting everything you need and you're getting it for your palate. You know, you're, you're, you're not feeling the sense of deprivation and you're not going into this like a diet. It's just more of a lifestyle. So that's why I like the AIP diet. Some things to look out for and how to use the carnivore diet. So to use the carnivore diet as a short-term nutritional therapeutic approach is a really great way to use this. If you have autoimmune issues and you've tried everything, including the AIP diet, and you're like at a loss and you're like, where do I go from here? Yeah, that's, that's a really good place to start. Get to the carnivore diet. Start using the carnivore diet as your kind of last stop. I think it's a very powerful tool for healing. And I think a lot of people could benefit from using the carnivore diet to heal autoimmune issues. Another way you can use this is to reset your palate, to, to reset your palate if you've got a big sweet tooth, if you're eating lots of junk food lately, if you just wanna practice some temperance and practice you know, a, a little bit of renunciation in a good way, this is a great idea for you, maybe taking a couple weeks to just do the carnivore diet, even just a week to do the carnivore diet is a really good approach. As far as, like I said, long-term, I, I know that there are people doing this diet long-term and having great success, so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's not safe and it's not effective. I really don't know, I don't know the answer. I know for me personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing this diet for a long period of time, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that, um, I would say you shouldn't do. I just don't feel comfortable saying it's safe to do long-term. I'm not saying it's not safe and I'm not saying it's safe. It's just, there's not enough data out there. There's not enough science. There are lots of anecdotes, anecdotes of people who are successfully doing the carnivore diet long-term. And so I don't think those should be discounted. Those count, that counts as information. Here are some mistakes to avoid on carnivore. The first mistake is using it to ignore the root cause of binge eating. So a lot of people are coming to the carnivore diet to help resolve binge eating. 
And I appreciate the sentiment. I think that's that makes sense because binge eating is kind of, a, there is a physical component to binge eating. When you eat processed carbohydrates, that triggers, and a lot of people that triggers binge eating. And getting rid of processed carbohydrates can help with that binge eating. However, there's a big part of binge eating that's caused by spiritual and emotional suppression. And part of my work is helping the body, mind, and spirit, helping to get you into body, mind, spirit harmonization so that you can make those big changes so that you can let go of binge eating, not just at the physical level, but on the level that causes it, which is the root cause is always an emotional and energetic cause. There's always an emotional and energetic cause to binge eating, to overeating, to compulsive eating, to junk food addiction, all that stuff. And if we just turn to the carnivore diet and we ignore the emotions that we're suppressing and shoving down, and that we've we've suppressed and shoved these emotions down our whole lives for many of us, we're leaving a big opportunity on the table. And those energetic patterns will just resurface at some point. And this is why you see a lot of people, there's there's lots of channels with people who are, you know, gung-ho on they've used the carnivore diet for their binge eating disorder. And then you see them maybe like a year later and they've gained all that weight back. That's because we, we can't, it's, it doesn't work on just a physical level. We have to get down there in the emotional and energetic releasing of these things that have been suppressed for so long. The last mistake to avoid is a crash diet mentality. And this is kind of why I cringe at even saying that, you know, the carnivore diet's fine and you, you could try it because a lot of people are using this to get, to get fast fat loss results. And this is a huge problem. When we go to a diet mentality and when we take on a diet from a place of restriction and deprivation, this creates a sense of deprivation. This creates a sense of, it's almost like a form of self abuse in a way. Um, it's just not a kind way to treat our bodies. And this creates a vicious cycle of deprivation and then the rebound effect, which I mentioned earlier, deprivation and into compulsive overeating or rebounding and eating things that you feel that you were deprived of while you were doing said deprivation. Also deprivation is just a terrible state of being. When we take on a diet from a state of the crash diet mentality, that is a state of deprivation. That's a state of not only deprivation, but desperation. It's like, I'm desperate to lose this weight. Let me do something very extreme. And sometimes we need something extreme. I know, sometimes we need a real pattern interrupt to change our eating behaviors. But that's never gonna get us to a permanent body fat, to a permanent state of a healthy body fat. The only way to get to that really beautiful, like the ideal body that you've got in your mind, the, you know, bikini ready body, God forbid, I'm even saying that, I can't even believe I'm saying that, but I know that's what a lot of people want. They wanna look great in a bikini, nothing wrong with it. But it, the only way to get there long-term is to do these boring things every day that are drink, drink enough water, eat vegetables every time that you eat a meal, let go of eating grains and processed junk food, walk enough. You got to walk 10,000 steps every day and you got to do these things every day, every day, every day, every day. That's how we get those long-term results. The long-term results are what matter because it doesn't matter if we can get into a bikini for four months and then we're back out of it in four months and then we're chasing it again next year. And we want to just stay in a healthy body fat. And that's not just for the way we look, that's for our health. That's for our body, mind, and spirit. It's real hard on the body, mind, and spirit when we continue to abandon ourselves with overeating to suppress our emotions and then turn back to depriving ourselves of the, of, of food, you know, of whole food groups and going on something like the carnivore diet in a sense of deprivation to fix something that Fix, it, fix an illusion of something that's broken that isn't really broken, we're kind of abusing ourselves here. So if, if you're gonna do the carnivore diet, I implore you, do not do it for the sake of getting a fast weight loss result. That is the most unhealthy approach on so many levels. If you finally really, if you're really, really ready, like 
here's the thing. If you're really ready to get to that dream body that you've wanted, easy come, easy go, my friend. You can't get it from a fast, drastic situation. I don't care how many YouTube videos you watched of, of certain people. There might be a handful of people on YouTube that have gotten something like that from the carnivore diet or from some other extreme diet. They are in the minority. The only way that we can get there is consistent daily lifestyle changes and really coming home to ourselves, taking those daily lifestyle changes seriously and really committing to every day doing those reasonable, boring sounding things, right? And then you'll get, you'll get to where you want to be and you'll be able to stay there. Okay. So that's everything I wanted to say about the carnivore diet. I have a new course called healing with food. It's all about the AIP diet. And if you have autoimmune issues and you're not quite sure where to start, I really recommend that you start with the AIP diet and start by taking my course. If it resonates for you at brendaturner.com slash heal, you can use the promo code insider and that'll get you 50% off. And that course has everything you'll need to start implementing a healthy way of eating. This diet, again, has changed my body, my mindset, my skin, my energy levels. I'm free of autoimmune symptoms most of the time. And I can't say enough good things about it. So if that's something that you're interested in, again, brendaturner.com slash heal. I'm so grateful for your time today. Thank you so much for hanging with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.